I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today, we're going to make minimalist map art using Inkscape and a free resource called OpenStreetMap. And here's some examples I've made in the past. This one right here for Santa Monica, we actually made in a previous video. So if you want to check that out, you can do that. But today, uh, thanks to Mark, who left a comment, said, nice vid. Can you make the Boston one? It looks sick. And thanks. Yeah, this is actually one I made previously. And the thing about Inkscape, you're always improving and finding new ways to do it. So I I'm going to break it down today in simple, easy to follow steps for like beginner, beginner, intermediate. And you don't you don't have to do Boston. You can make any place in the world that you want. But we're going to do this green one here now. So let's go to some open space. And then there's all sorts of ways you can do it. But for this exercise, we're going to make an exterior box, the interior map area, and then we'll drop a Lego, a Lego, a label on at the end. So grab your create rectangles and squares tool. And then if you don't have your fill and stroke menu, it's just like paintbrush thing in the corner and just draw out a rectangle. All right. So mine has a border called a stroke. So we'll take the stroke off under stroke paint, just X out of that. And then for the fill, let's just make it not, something nice and neutral. We'll change it based on our map color at the end. But just so you can see, um, there's the exterior box. And then a way, a simple way to make the interior box, just do Control D. That duplicates this object. And then now we'll change this interior color to something like neutral, uh, really light like that. And then you see how it has like the arrows all pointing in right there. If you hold Control and Shift together and draw it in, it will keep, it'll maintain the ratio. So it's like the same object, just to scale down a little bit. And then I can just um, raise it up a little bit and then eyeball it just sort of the part at the bottom. All right. So then that's the basic, that's the easy part. Now, how do we actually get the map data without creating it all from scratch? That's where we're going to go to OpenStreetMap. So it's a free resource. I'll just go to it right now. OpenStreetMap.org. It's basically a community of people that put together all this map data from all over the world. And then they give us access to it right here. So we definitely want to give credit to them. And then you want to click on this down here, the copyright license page and to see how you can give credit, make sure that you're um, recognizing where the stuff came from. It's watch, watch how powerful it is. So I'm on the, the um, open street map. This is like the, where you can search for wherever you want. So type in whatever place you're going up here. I got Boston queued up. And then as you can see, it's beautiful. Like this is, this is gorgeous, but we need, we need to actually go to a version of this that we can download in an SVG format. That's like a vector file. So we can put it into Inkscape and then manipulate it and just make it beautiful. Um, and they, they do that for us. So if you go over here to layers, the version that we can use is standard. And here it goes. This is, um, look how, look how, look how deep, this is the park. Okay. Here's like the swan boats. Have you ever been to Boston? Like it's just, this is super detailed. And this is people, like people input all this information. So Boston has a lot of input, which I'll now show you how we can get it out of here into Inkscape and then, then strip it down. All right. So get it to where you like it. And then over here, you see this like share thing, click on share and then choose set custom dimensions. And then this box here, that's not shaded in, this is the part that we're going to actually capture. So there's two ways you can move it. If you want to move the actual edges, you can pull the corners like kind of intuitive, but if you want to move the whole box, it sees like this nine squares right there. I'm going to move mine. So I have some of Charlestown, go get back Bay, get South end and right about there, just a nice rectangle. Some of the Harbor Charles river. And I like that. All right. So important step over here, format, go to SVG. That's the vector format we need. And then in the previous tutorial, I think you saw, I did, if you type in one and then enter, that's going to scale it based on the exact uh, data, but I'm going to, but that's going to be a big file. And I usually use that because I want it to be real precise. Um, but I've learned to speed things up. Let's not scale it. It's already downloading. Let's not scale it ex exactly one to one. Let's go like to one to 60,000. Don't worry about the math. It just basically is going to reduce the file size because Inkscape is prone to crash. And then you'll see when we dump this into Inkscape, it'll give us a beautiful map. And then like, for some reason, there's a quirk. It'll give us like half the Atlantic ocean with it. All right. So let's push download officially map four. this is the file I'm going to use. And now let's put it into Inkscape. Okay. We're back in Inkscape. I'm literally just going to drag in the file that map four file. And then I have to have include SVG image as an editable object. So that's the most important one. And then DPI, I've now been trying a hundred. It just seems to make, again, the file size a little bit more manageable and click okay. And it'll think for a second 
And then when I do it, it ends up way up on the northwest quadrant. And then you'll see just a whole lot of ocean. It's best to zoom out so you can find it. Okay, there's part of the ocean. And there, <laughs> it's just a lot of water. All right, zoom in. So in the previous tutorial, I delete out the ocean right away to kind of like bring the file size down. But when I have a peninsula map, I like to keep it because we're gonna use it at the end and then recolorize it. All right, so zoom in. And then how are we gonna make this look less busy without spending all this time? There's some shortcuts. So you could just click on each random object, like whatever that blue square is and just delete it. But then we gotta go through all of them. So instead, Inkscape got a really good tool. Let's click on one of them and then see how like the fill and stroke menu opens up. So I know that the fill is that color. I know I got the right object. If you go to edit, then select same and the select same fill color. Now it collects all those little purple things and then you can push delete and they're gone. So same thing with like these triangles, click the triangle, we know it's a fill. Sometimes they're a stroke, it's confusing, but that's on a fill. I go to edit, select same fill color, and then all the triangles are gone. That's one way you can go quick. The other way is when you're zoomed in like this, if you hold shift, you can just drag a box over stuff you don't want. So like if you can keep, keep the labels if you want, but I don't want them. So no back bay, no 133, no south end, all this stuff. You can just keep pushing shift and then collecting all the, and eh, we'll keep Boston for now. I don't need this street sign and then just delete that out. Gone, Oop, I missed that part. So I'll go back to that, just hold shift, make a box over it. I don't want 23. You know what, I don't want Boston. <laughs> I'm gonna get, I don't want any labels. I'm gonna go real, real minimalist. And then up here, I don't need this, don't need 27. All right, so I missed the box again. All right, and then delete. So you get the picture. Okay, let me show you a distinction. So they see these dotted lines, like that's clearly a stroke. So I click on it, I see it's on a stroke. Then I can go to edit, select same, stroke color, and it collects all those things. And then we get rid of all the lines at once. But then this one, uh, this just looks like a stroke, right? If I click on it, it's not a stroke, it's a fill. So you go to edit, select same, fill color, and then you can get rid of all that. We're getting there. Through the magic of editing, I'm gonna clean up the last of these words and everything, and then we're gonna make the streets themselves actually thinner, because it looks better without these big, thick interstates. There we go, it's all cleaned up. So now click on one of the roads, anywhere actually. Actually, it doesn't matter where you click, just click something. And then this trick, you can't, we're not gonna go after a fill or a stroke. Go to edit, select all. We're gonna get everything, the whole entire map. And then, so Inkscape's not even sure what to make of this. So if we're on our, our fill and stroke menu, for stroke style, it's not inches, it's not pixels, it's just percentage, 100%. So we're gonna make the width of everything under stroke, any stroke on the whole map, let's drop it down to like 40%, 470, 40%, then click enter. There we go, okay, so let's take off these blue bandages, just click anywhere off the thing. And then look at that, <laughs> you see how it's like showing the individual on-ramp, off-ramp. This is actually south, this is the train station down there. But so th the trick we just did, if, you, if you're doing a different area of the world, when you have a lot of um, detail, sometimes Inkscape will make it look like a really big thick line. And all we did is we selected all, and then we changed the overall stroke size, we reduced it so it looks all a lot uh, cleaner like this. All right, so now we can work on recolorizing it. So this is all personal preference. We can change it to a different color scheme. I'm gonna go with that um, like green and gold. So one thing I like to do, we got like a, a rogue R, let's get rid of that. Uh, what I'm thinking I like to do is I actually, I will pull out the ocean for later or the water. If it's a simple coastline, you can just draw it in later, but this is real complicated. And like these, this is like important stuff. Like I used to live right here and cross this bridge. I lived over here. Just, uh, this means a lot to me. All right, let's move some water. So let's click on the Charles River here and then see how it shows it's a fill. We use the same tool as before, edit, select same, fill color. And then that, it looks like it's got everything, but what about the big ocean? It's got it, it's just that we can't see the edges of it. So I'll do Control G, it's gonna group everything. Now I can drag it away, just to, we're gonna use it later. So there it goes, looks like it didn't, oh yeah, it got everything. All right, so zoom out, and then just pull it away. I don't wanna mess with that now. I just want it off the area I'm gonna recolor. So move, move, move. And what's all this? It's, uh, this, this is probably the ferry line. So this we can go click on one of those, Let's see, that is a, that's a stroke. So go to edit, select same stroke color, and then those all go. So as you see, once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. I've kept this gray box 
as part of the map just so it's like simple to see let's get rid of it now so just click on it move it out of there and then and that looks that looks pretty good but we're gonna we're gonna give this one nice green theme to it so let's push shift and then grab everything you can get and then we're gonna group it so control G and all we're doing is we want every single piece of this remaining map to get colorized here so then it's all selected go to filters color and then down here there should be one called simple blend click on that and then this is going to give us a menu box with some choices so nothing's going to happen until you push live preview but i have it set to there's you can, you can play with these like sometimes i use screen multiply but in this case i want it to be like green white and then the um, we'll make the water like gold at the end so for us in this case we're going to go to hard light and then go to live preview and so okay so that's like i think i was using that for like santa monica but anyway so we don't want blue though we want to go green so it won't render until we click live preview again at least for my machine so i'll go to somewhere in the greens we'll try that see what that looks like all right that's cool but i want to go darker so i think i'll just pull this down deeper into the corner there live preview and i like this that looks good so we'll go with this so click apply and then close and then we've got our <laughs> we got our our boston now let's bring our water back in so i'm going to grab my waterway and then see how that's the coastline this looks cool too you can make like a negative if you want to make like a waterway map but now let's put it back when you bring the water back in just find a reference point like this right here i think this is the museum of science like right here it just clicked into place great okay let's change the water to gold so I got my one part of the water selected and I'm going to use the old trick. So go to edit, select same, fill color. And now we should have the whole thing now. We'll find out. Click in. Yeah, we do. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day. And then <laughs> before they, let's make it before they cleaned, before they cleaned the Boston Harbor. It looked pretty bad. But now it's beautiful. So we'll go to some type of goal. Where do we want it? Right there. I like it. All right, so zoom out now, and we need to group everything together. So first, click on the ocean. You know you have that because you'll see the, the fill is there. And then hold Shift, and just grab all of your map. Like, go beyond where you need to go. And then we didn't get everything, so Shift, grab everything. So, all right, so now I've got it. So I've got my map, and then you just have to trust that the ocean's grabbed because it's um, the border's like off screen. Then do Control G. That will group everything. It'll think for a second. And then now it's all grouped. We can create our clipping mask. So go to create rectangles and squares and you can draw out a, the area you want to actually put on the, the final um, poster. So if you want an exact area, let's say there was like a specific dimension. I've got um, up here width and height you can change. I'm on millimeters. So let's just say you wanted something specific, 130, 96. And there you have it. But then I can't see what I'm doing. So under here, there's opacity. I'll lower that somewhere so I can see. Maybe get a little closer. And then this is whatever you need. So I think I'll take most of Boston. I'll get Back Bay, a little bit of Charlestown, and just call it right there. Just um, I always take the opacity off just out of habit. So I've got the, the clipping mask selected. Then hold Shift and get the whole thing. And then again, I don't see my border hash marks like normal, but it's collected. And then you go to Object, Clip, Set. And there, <laughs> you did it, there's your mask. All right, all right, let's put it onto the original poster board we made. Actually, I changed colors when you weren't looking, but here we go, let's slide it into place and take a look. And there you go, it's all over. Hopefully it wasn't too hot. Let's see.